What's happening with Ben Simmons? Here's why it'll be an awkward situation if Ben's still on the Sixers by the start of training camp on September 28th, and what Philly can still get in return for him. Also, we'll look at the four teams most likely to trade for him and the main reason why the Aussies' value has fallen off. Before continuing, over three quarters of my audience isn't subscribed, so please subscribe. Also hit thumbs up for the beastly YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. You've likely seen it by now, but this post-game answer, or lack of one from Doc Rivers, entails that Philadelphia's head coach wants his front office to move on from their point guard. Doc, do you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team like the one you guys want to become? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Um, you know, so I don't know the answer to that. Doc wasn't going to lie to the reporter, we have to give him credit for that, but we all know how he really wanted to answer that question. You think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team? Like Hell no, till the no, 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 Hell to the no. Ben Simmons made first team all defense in 2021 and has established himself as an elite player on that end. But he didn't do the greatest job on Trey Young in the second round, and while there's no shame in letting Ice Trey hit daggers in your grill, here's why the 6'11 point guard's trade market value has actually fallen off. To say Simmons failed to assert himself and produce against Atlanta would be an understatement. He shot 34.2% from the line in the 2021 playoffs overall, accounting for the worst free throw percentage in NBA playoff history for a player with at least 70 attempts. The Aussie passed up driving lanes one after the other, ultimately leading to an infamous passing up of a wide open dunk. Simmons took 10 shots per game in both the regular season and first round, but that dropped to six field goals versus Atlanta. Ben had his MVP candidate teammate Joel Embiid going crazy, and there's no denying he let the team, organization, and fan base down with his play. Every summer, we see scrimmages with Simmons nailing jumpers, and we all get tricked into assuming it's a new element to his game. Really, Ben's just letting it fly in a low-pressure environment and getting a few to fall. Knocking it down when the entire world is watching, that's something completely different. It takes endless reps, entire nights in the gym, strictly working on your jumper. According to ESPN, one of the messages Simmons sent back to the Sixers is that it's not his job to fix his trade value. While technically that's true, it would have been a good move for Simmons to come out and make a statement accepting responsibility for his performance. Playing in the most popular and talented pro basketball league on earth and getting paid hundreds of millions of dollars to do so comes along with expectations. The sooner Simmons can accept that, the better off he'll be. To me, the NBA legend who shares an alma mater with Ben said it best. Knock him down, oh, Ben. ben. Hey, 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 ben. But camera, Ben. You went to LSU. Man up, man. Man up. Stop messing around. Come on now. You know better than that. After all that's gone down, now let's look at what the Sixers could realistically get for Simmons, followed by the teams that could potentially get him. The report at the beginning of August was that Philly GM Elton Brand wanted control of four first round picks and an all-star player in return for Simmons. That asking price is outlandish and Golden State was reportedly one of the teams who wasn't willing to part ways with such considerable assets. The Sixers asked the Warriors for their number 7 and number 14 picks in the 2021 draft, as well as James Wiseman and two future first round draft picks. Simmons going to San Antonio is the first potential deal I want to talk about, as the Spurs could part ways with DeJounte Murray, Derek White, Devin Vassell, and two future first round picks. If the Spurs didn't have to give up Keldon Johnson, this deal would be a massive W for R.C. Buford. The Spurs just picked up one of the NBA's better three-point marksmen in Doug McDermott. Adding Simmons who can get out in transition and get guys open looks will develop Keldon Johnson and allow the Spurs to rebuild on the fly while competing for the playoffs. The Minnesota Timberwolves could acquire the Sixers PG by giving up D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Jalen McDaniels, and a future first round pick. The Sixers would also give Seth Curry to the Wolves. It's no secret Minnesota wants Simmons. 
the Wolves' front office is trying to find a way for him to team up with Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, and Anthony Edwards, but the Wolves simply don't have enough assets to add Simmons without parting ways with one of those players. If that's the case, Russell becomes the most expendable. By adding Curry to the mix, Minnesota is also able to bring in one of the best perimeter shooters in the game. The Toronto Raptors could deal Pascal Siakam a 2022 first round pick, a 2024 first round pick, and a 2025 first round pick swap in exchange for Simmons. Siakam was an all-star in the 2019-20 season, fresh off helping the Raptors win a title in 2019. Siakam can pop up around the basket with force and knock down the occasional three. He's also a very solid defender. This move would pair fellow Africans Embiid and Siakam on the same team, and while Pascal isn't the perfect fit in Philly's offense, he was the second option on a championship team, a role he'd go back into with Philly. Simmons in Toronto may just work out, as Nick Nurse could play him as a small ball five, given the Raps have Fred Van Vliet at point guard. Considering Simmons doesn't have a three-pointer in an era dominated by deep range shooting, that significantly lowers his value. However, his status as a player that can make a positive impact on the game is hard to dispute. With elite athleticism and lateral quickness, plus a seven-foot wingspan, Simmons is one of the NBA's most versatile defenders. He's made two All-NBA defensive teams, one All-NBA third team, and three NBA All-Star games in his career. The man's still just 25 years old, there's still a lot of room for him to grow. If Simmons were to return to Philadelphia without being traded before the season, this is no doubt a completely awkward situation off the court and a movie that we've seen play out before on the court. It's time for the Sixers to shake things up and potentially accept less for Simmons because, let's face it, the Ben and Joel combination is never going to get you past the second round. In some cases, like the Bucks and Raptors, Teams can fail in the playoffs year after year and ultimately win a championship. Philly can still be one of those teams, but it's not going to be with Ben Simmons. The number 21 pick in last year's draft, Tyrese Maxey, proved he's NBA ready last year and deserves the minutes at PG. Tyrese took a couple threes per game last year, and while he only made 30% of them, at least he'll provide some floor spacing. The best timeline that can take place after a trade is that Ben Simmons either starts attempting more threes or becomes a primary low post scorer. And from the Sixers' perspective, of course getting a productive player or two in return along with multiple picks. But in terms of Simmons, when you're a point guard who can't shoot, that'll hurt your team's floor spacing and your team's overall confidence. With all due respect, Ben can't be standing out there on the perimeter like a guard if he has no jumper. I know his playmaking is above average, but refusing to shoot even from the mid-range just won't work for any team in today's NBA at the point guard spot. If Simmons is going to have a long career, in my opinion, he's got to change his position to become a point forward who of course still handles the ball in transition and jams it on guys, but instead of standing on the wing in the half court with a position change, Simmons would be setting screens and rolling. Something's gotta give with this guy regardless, but let me know your take in the comments section. Also, what do you think the Sixers can still get in return for Simmons? Hope you have a great day. D-Flow signing off.